Maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. No, it's not the Wednesday Adams dance, but you know what it is. It is the July Book of the Month. You know, that is probably the weirdest intro that the Book of the Month ever had. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means so much to me. I appreciate you guys more than you know. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you are new to my channel, you haven't quite had a chance to subscribe yet. I hope you click that little red subscribe button over there. I would love to have you come back and join us for future videos. I love reading and replying to your comments and I hope you give this video a thumbs up as well. So anyway, today we are going to be doing our book of the month club. I know it's a Wednesday. I'm dressed like this, but you know, I figured why not have a wacky Wednesday every now and then. I think we all need a wacky Wednesday, don't we? So anyway, for the book of the month club right now, it's $15 and 99 cents a month. Uh, should you choose to get a book shipping, of course, is included in that. They pick at least five different genres for you to choose from for their choices for the book of the month. Um, if you pick one of those books, fine. They usually send it out within a couple of days. At that point, you have the option if you wanted to add on a couple of books, you can do that as well. That way it's included in the free box for free shipping. And if nothing there sparks your interest or you know you're going away or you're just so far behind in reading or you just don't have it in the budget this month, easy enough to skip that month. Sometimes when you skip, um, they come back and offer you some other suggestions. Sometimes they just thank you and leave it at that. But it's just such a fun way to kind of build your book collection, maybe get out of your comfort zone, try a different couple of books, fun like that. I'll have a link below as well. If you use my link, your first book is going to be $5. Again, shipping is going to be included in that. If you do use my link, I get a free book. Thank you very much for those of you that have used my link. I really appreciate it. And again, shipping on that is going to be free. And it just the next month, if you decide to stick with it, it's going to go up to that $15.99. So I don't remember the criteria for that, but I've been in it for a few years. So I did reach the BFF status, which is like best friend forever status. So it gives me a few little perks like the birthday month, you get to pick a free book. So I've got that book in this month because it wasn't in last month for some reason. I think because I had a friend or something that used my link so I couldn't get like two free books in the same month. So anyway, I got my free book this month. Also another perk as at the end of the year they have what they call the book of the year finalist and I guess all these readers, uh, the members of uh, the book of the month kind of vote on the book that they think is the best of the month. So they narrow it down to some five finalists and then there's one that's picked. And as a BFF, I got to pick a free book from those finalists, which was really good for me because I hadn't read any of those books. So that was really great. But if you have read those books, it would just make a free gift. It's right around, you know, the holidays or something. So it's easy enough to get that free book and give it to someone for the holiday. Alrighty, so this month they picked five genres for us. So we have a historical fiction, we have a romance, a contemporary fiction, a fantasy, and a thriller. So anyway, I'm going to go over the books first that I didn't choose just in case it's something that you're thinking about or maybe you are already a member but you haven't quite picked which one you want yet. Maybe reading, hearing someone talk about it might kind of spark an interest and say, yeah, that's the book I want. So anyway, we are going to get into discussing those books. Alrighty, so this first book is a historical fiction and it's called The First Ladies and it's by M. Benedict and V. Christopher Murray. So two brilliant women, a first lady and civil rights leader become friends and agents of progress for a changing nation. The daughter of formerly enslaved parents, Mary McLeod Bethune refuses to back down as white supremacist attempt to thwart her work. She marches on as an activist and an educator. And as her reputation grows, she becomes a celebrity revered by titans of business and recognized by US presidents. Eleanor Roosevelt herself is awestruck and eager to make her acquaintance. Initially drawn together because their shared belief 
in women's rights and the power of education, Mary and Eleanor become first fast friends, confiding their secrets, hopes, and dreams, and holding each other's hands through tragedy and triumph. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt is elected president, the two women begin to collaborate more closely, particularly as Eleanor moves towards her own agenda, separate from FDR, a consequence of the devastating discovery of her husband's secret love affair. Eleanor becomes a controversial first lady for her outspokenness, particularly on civil rights. And when she receives threats because of her strong ties to Mary, it only fuels the women's desire to fight together for justice and equality. This is the story of two different yet equi equally formidable, passionate, and committed women, and the way in which their singular friendship helped form the foundation for the modern civil rights movement. Alrighty, so our second book is called Hello Stranger. It's a romance by Catherine Center. After an accident, a struggling artist realized it's hard to face your issues when you literally can't recognize faces. Love isn't blind, it's just a little blurry. Sadie Montgomery never saw what was coming, literally. One minute, She's celebrating the biggest achievement of her life, placing as a finalist in the North American Portrait Society's competition. The next, she's lying in a hospital bed, diagnosed with a probably temporary condition known as face blindness. She can see, but every face she looks at now is a jumbled puzzle of disconnected features. Imagine trying to read a book upside down and in another language. This is Sadie's new reality with every face she sees. But as she struggles to cope, hang on to her artist dream, work through major family issues, and take care of her beloved dog, Peanut, she falls into love, lust, a temporary obsession to distract from the real problems in her life with not just one man, oh no, but two very different ones. The timing couldn't be worse. If only her life were a little more in focus, Sadie must be able to find her way, but perceiving anything clearly right now seems impossible, even though there are things we can only find when we aren't looking, and there are people who show up when we least expect them. And there are always other ways of seeing. Alrighty, so our next book is a contemporary fiction and it's called The Connollys of County Down and it's by Tracy Lane. In this moving tale about forgiveness, loyalty, and love's limits, one's family tries to keep it together, together. When Tara Connolly is released from prison after serving 18 months on a drug charge, she knows rebuilding her life at 30 years old won't be easy. With no money and no prospects, she returns home to live with her siblings who are both busy with their own problems. Her brother, a single dad, struggles with the ongoing effects of a brain injury he sustained years ago and her sister's fragile facade facade, facade, you know what I mean, of calm and order is cracking under the burden of big secrets. Life becomes even more complicated when the cop who put her in prison keeps showing up unannounced, leaving Tara to wonder what he wants from her now. While she works to rebuild a new career and hold her family together, Tara finds a chance at love in a most unlikely place. But when the Connolly secrets start to unravel and threaten her future, they must all face their worst fears and come clean or risk losing each other forever. The Connollys of County Down is a moving novel about testing the bounds of love and loyalty. It explores the possibility of beginning our lives anew 
and reveals the pitfalls of shielding each other from the bitter truth. The next one is a fantasy, and it sounds really interesting too. It sounds like a really fun read. So this one is called Immortal Longings, and it's by Chloe Gong. So in this action-packed adult debut from Chloe Gong, Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra is remade into a fantasy epic. Every year, thousands in the kingdom of Talon will flock to its capital twin cities, San Air, where the palace hopes host a set of games. For those confident enough in their ability to jump between bodies, competitors across San Air fight to the death to win unimaginable riches. Princess Kala Tulimi lurks in hiding. Five years ago, a massacre killed her parents and left the palace of Iar empty. And she was the one who did it. Before King Kasa's forces and sand can catch her, she plans to finish the job and bring down the monarchy. Her reclusive uncle always greets the victor of the games. So if she wins, she gets her opportunity at last to kill him. Enter Anton Magusa, an exiled aristocrat. His childhood love has lain in a coma since they were both ousted from the palace, and he's deep in debt trying to keep her alive. Thankfully, he's one of the best jumpers in the kingdom, fitting from body or flitting from body to body at will. His last chance at saving her is entering these games and winning. Kala finds both an unexpected alliance with Anton and help from King Casas' adopted son, August, who wants to mend Talon's ills. But the three of them have very different goals. Even as Kala and Anton partnership spirals into something all-consuming, before the games close, Kala must decide what she's playing for, her lover or her kingdom. Alrighty, and now for the one that I chose. So this is, of course, I picked the thriller. It's called Dark Corners, and it's by Megan Golden. So it says, from the pen that brought us the night swim, a new true crime inspired nail biter where anyone could be the killer. So it says Terrence Bailey is about to be released from prison for breaking and entering, though investigators have long suspected him in the murders of six women. As his release date approaches, Bailey gets a surprise visit from Madison Logan, a hot young influencer with a huge social media following. Hours later, Madison disappears, and police suspect she's been kidnapped or worse. Is Madison's disappearance connected with her visit to Bailey? And why was she visiting him in the first place? When they hit a wall in their investigation, the FBI reluctantly asked for Rachel Crowell's help in finding the missing influencer. Madison seems only to exist on social media. She has no family, no friends, and other than in her post, most people have never seen her. Who is she, really? Using a fake Instagram account, Rachel goes undercover to BuzzCon, a popular influencer conference, where she discovers a world of fierce rivalry that may have turned lethal. When police find the body of a woman with a tattoo of a snake eating its tail, identical to the tattoo Rachel had seen on Bailey's hand, the FBI must consider a chilling possibility. Bailey has an accomplice on the outside and a dangerous obsession with influences, including Rachel Crowell herself. Suddenly, the target of a monster hiding in plain sight, Rachel is forced to confront the very real dangers that lurk in the dark corners of the internet. 
Alrighty, so for my free birthday book, I have another thriller, and this one is by Riley Sager, and it's the only one left. And look at that mansion up on the rocky cliff. I know, it just kind of gives you thrills. I'm just looking forward to reading this, doesn't it? Alrighty, so anyway, again, this one's a thriller, The Only One Left by Riley Sager. So, from the king of thrills and chills, a new story with unexplained murders, a spooky cliff mansion, and lots of secrets. And I'm glad that it said this because I've read a couple of Riley Sager books and I really, really enjoyed them, but I always assumed Riley was a girl. So, now I know that he's the king. Riley is a gentleman. Alrighty, so now into the book. At 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope. Now reduced to a schoolyard chant, the Hope family murders shocked the Maine coast one bloody night in 1929. While most people assume 17-year-old Lenora was responsible, the police were never able to prove it. Other than her denial after the killings, she has never publicly spoken about that night nor has she stepped foot outside Hope's End, the cliffside mansion where the massacre occurred. Stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It's now 1983, and home health aide Kit McDear arrives at a decaying Hope's End to care for Lenora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but She's the only one not dead. As Kit helps Lenora write about the events leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear there's more to the tale than people know. But when new details about her predecessor's departure come to light, Kit starts to suspect that Lenore might not be telling the complete truth and that the seemingly harmless woman in her care could be far more dangerous than she first thought. Alrighty, so doesn't that sound great? I think I got two awesome thrillers to pick. I know I, I've only read maybe 50 pages into the last book that I got last month that I was like dying, dying to read. I am just struggling to get caught up on YouTube so, so that I can kind of feel justified in taking an hour or two a day just to myself to do some reading. I'm really looking forward to it. Though that book that I started, she started it, right? It was a really good book. and um, But the pages are kind of like beige and the printing is kind of like gray. So I don't know if that's a mistake, but kind to read it where it's kind of like a light gray print is making it really hard. But luckily, I got these magnifiers and I'm hoping that helps kind of bring that uh, book to light or I need to bring some more lights into where I'm reading so that I can see the print a little bit better. I, I think it must have been a misprint for it to be that light gray, but anyway, we will get through it because that book, oh my God, it sounded so good. So anyway, did any of these books kind of spark your interest? Have you read Riley Sager? I have, like I said, I just always assumed it was a guy, but I've read a couple of his books really really loved them and enjoyed them so i'm looking forward to reading these two new books as well and anyway i'd love to hear your choices for the book of the month or if you're not in the book of the month if you had these choices which one would you have picked so anyway i want to thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day you guys are awesome you mean so much to me and i appreciate you so much so i hope everyone goes out has a fabulous rest of the week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Be kind. Be happy. Enjoy life. Have some fun. I love you all so much, and we will see you in our next video. Now I have to go and learn the Wednesday dance. And she danced, danced, danced.